Guides for water signs on today's episode of Obleron Spirituality. <music> Greetings, soul family. I am Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on today's episode where we are going to talk about how to find the right guide if you're born under a water sign. Now, the water signs of the Zodiac are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. A good rule of thumb in finding a guide if you're born under a water sign would be to look to the element of water. What are the guides that have an affinity with water? These types of guides can come from the oceans or the freshwater lakes. They can also be guides that represent the rain and the snow or any other situation that involves water. Some common water spirits would include water dragons, water fairies, undines, nymphs, nereids, and such. In addition to selecting guides that are based in the element of water, you can also select guides that have characteristics in common with water signs and water attributes. One thing that water signs have in common is that they are all highly empathic. They can be called the empaths of the zodiac. They are also highly intuitive, as well as nurturing and many of them are also very family and friendship oriented. Many water signs also do well when applying their talents to serving others, such as, let's say, doctors, healers, psychics, and counselors. Okay, so in going to the individual signs, we are starting off with Cancer. Cancer is cardinal water and it kicks off the start of the summer. Cancer also rules over the fourth house, which is related to home and family life. Cancer is ruled by the moon and is considered to be the mother of the zodiac. In tarot, the sign of cancer is represented by the chariot. Those born under the sign of cancer will generally take an emphasis on home and family life. They will also tend to be the most supportive and nurturing of the water signs. One possible guide for the sign of cancer would be the Greek goddess Amphitrite. She appears as a beautiful woman, she may sometimes wear netting, and she may also be adorned in crab claws or perhaps a crab claw headdress. She was also married to Poseidon, the king of the sea. Her spirit animals typically consist of all sea creatures. She favors crustaceans, fish, seals, and dolphins. However, it's the crab that serves as her messenger. People mostly pray to Amphitrite for protection on the sea. However, she can also be petitioned for prosperity, true love, and abundance. She can access all the treasures of the sea, and she also has the powers of healing and fertility. In some cases, she may also punish unfaithful or abusive spouses. Another possible guide for those born under the sign of Cancer would be the Indian god Chandra. He was called the Lord of the Moon, and he was married to 27 sisters. They were called the Star Maidens, but he only really had a fascination for one. When the sister wives complained to their father about Chandra's negligence, he cursed him, forcing him to wither away. However, Shiva came in and established a truce. Chandra meets up with each one of his 27 wives once a month. Chandra becomes a full moon when he meets up with his favorite wife, Rohini, and he starts to wane as he's away from her. Many people invoke Chandra for use in astrology. However, he also represents fertility, and his moonbeams are said to stimulate pregnancy. Chandra appears as a very handsome and youthful man. His spirit animals are the rabbit and the antelope. Chandra rules over the sign of cancer, and he also rides a chariot driven by ten white horses. This is an interesting fact because, as I've said earlier, the chariot also symbolizes cancer in the tarot. Okay, so moving right along, we now come to Scorpio, which is the sign of fixed water, and it signifies the middle of fall. Those born under the sign of Scorpio tend to be very mysterious, enigmatic, and introspective. Scorpio rules over the eighth house of the zodiac, which refers to death, inheritance, and other people's money. One possible guide for those born under the sign of Scorpio would be the god Mars. At first glance, it may seem like Mars is an odd choice for Scorpio. However, Mars once ruled over Scorpio's house before Pluto was established as the house ruler. Being the father of Romulus, Mars is considered the father of Rome. However, with possible Etruscan origins, he could be much more ancient. He may be considered a god of war now, 
but originally he was more of a god of agriculture, or rather the protection of one's fields and agriculture. It wasn't until later when he became associated with Ares that he started to take on more of a war god persona. He is recognized by his famous shield and spear, and his spirit animals consist of wolves, horses, bulls, rams, and boars. You may want to consider offerings of figs and bay laurels, as Mars definitely has an affinity for those. You may also want to venerate and hold a feast for Mars on March 1st. That is the day of Mars' birthday, as well as the day of the original Roman New Year before the Calendar Reformation. Another possible guide for those born under the sign of Scorpio would be the goddess Hecate. She is the queen of the night, the goddess of witchcraft, and one of the rulers of the spirit world. She wanders the boundaries between life and death, and she also serves as an intermediary between humans and spirits. Hecate was originally a chief deity in western Turkey. The Greeks would later adopt her, but her name, which means influence from afar, still pays homage to her foreign origins. She is also witness to every crime committed at night. Many times, she is also invoked for the cause of justice. She can be a champion of women, as well as be petitioned for fertility and victory in battle. She also commands both powers of life and death. She can be petitioned for healing, especially if medical procedures have not worked, or she can be petitioned for a swift and painless death. Hecate is an exceptionally powerful spirit and was once considered by Zeus honored above all others. If you choose Hecate as a spirit guide, she will generally come to you in your visions and dreams. She may also send her familiars out to her followers in the form of snakes, dragons, cats, and especially dogs. She is associated with Sirius, the dog star, and also the new moon phase. Her color is black, and she accepts offerings of garlic and honey, especially lavender honey. Okay, so moving right along, we are now on the sign of Pisces. Pisces is a mutable sign, and it signifies the end of winter. Pisces is generally considered the most mystical of water signs, and it is ruled by Neptune, the lord of the deep. One possible guide for those born under the sign of Pisces would be Enki, the famous Anunnaki god from Mesopotamia. Enki is considered the Sumerian lord of water, abundance, and wisdom. Enki's planet is Mercury, and he also shares many characteristics in common with the god. For example, he taught humanity the art of civilization, and is also a bit of a trickster spirit. Enki's symbol is also a pair of entwined snakes, similar to the Caduceus. He rules over semen, and he can heal male infertility, as well as bestow fertility to women. Enki has a fondness for humans, and has a tendency to help anyone who seeks his aid. His spirit animals are fish and snakes, and he also likes offerings of beer. Enki can also manifest as a merman. Another possible guide for those born under the sign of Pisces would be mermaids. Mermaids are found in practically every culture, and they also inhabit practically every body of water. Mermaids have the gift of prophecy, and they also have the ability to grant wishes. They also have the power to remove or bestow fertility, as well as abundance and prosperity. They also have a tendency to have a volatile temperament, and they can also become vengeful if provoked. Some mermaids are healers, but they are generally associated with female sexuality and power. Mermaids can be viewed as either good or bad, and a lot of that has to deal with a culture's view towards women empowerment. Their planet is the moon, and their spirit animal is fish. They are also often associated with seashells and musical instruments. Okay, so we're going to stop there for today. This is by no means a complete list, and if you have any spirit guide to add to the conversation, please leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Thanks again for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you again next week. Much love and blessings. I love you all, and now we shall close with the chant of Obleron. Aum Dei Sote, Aum Dei Obleron, Aum Dei Sote, Aum Dei Obleron.